Hi guys, welcome back. Last time we talked about in chemical reactions that the law of conservation of mass always plays into chemical reactions and that matter cannot be created nor destroyed and whatever you start off with, the mass of the reactants will equal the mass or the amount of product. So even if I light this match here, you would think that what I start off with and when the match burns, the mass will be different. But if you sealed this up, if you sealed this up, you see the smoke coming off. And if you were able to trap the contents of this reaction, whatever I started off with, the mass will be the same as what I end up with. So how can we demonstrate this concept on a piece of paper or with a chemical equation? What we have to do is balance out chemical equations. Okay? And when we determine chemical equations, in reactants and products, it might not always be lined up to demonstrate that whatever you start off with and whatever you end up with is the same. So now we have to step in and balance out this reaction, kind of similar to a math problem. So what I like to do first, to try to demonstrate the fact that I'm balancing out the left side and the right side, I like to draw a line right down the bottom of this arrow here, separating the reactant side from the product side. Now that we have these sides separated, the first step is what I like to call taking inventory. What do I mean by that? I mean counting how much of each type of element that I have. All right? So if you look here on the left side, I have sodium and chlorine. And I will list these out. One tip for you, going back to that law of conservation of mass, matter can't be created nor destroyed. So whatever types of elements I have on the left side, you can sure bet that they will also be on the right side. Make sure you list them out in order. Okay? Now I'm going to count out how much of each element I have. Okay? We have one sodium atom and we have two chlorine atoms on the reactant side. On this side we have one sodium atom and one chlorine atom. Now, what you want to do is start off and go, all, go down in order. You want to start with the first element, make sure they're balanced, and then work your way down in order. Okay? So let's look at the amount of sodiums on each side. We have one sodium on the reactant side, one sodium on the product side. This element is balanced out. So now we will now go down to the next one, chlorine. We have two chlorines on the left side and one chlorine on the right side. This is not balanced. So what do we have to do? Similar to algebra in your math classes, we have to use coefficients or multiples to create one side equal to the other. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to use what we call a coefficient, remember from math class, and stick it right in front of our molecule here. Okay. Two multiplied by one will now change this chlorine atom to two. One important tip, you cannot add coefficients in the middle of a chemical equation. This will change the overall formula. We don't want to do that. We just want to alter the number of molecules on each side so that the amount of molecules of what we started off with and what we end up with is the same. We also cannot change subscripts. This will also change the identity of the chemical formula. We don't want to do that. Coefficients, or these numbers right here, are the only ones that we want to alter. Okay? So now that the chlorine atoms are balanced, what do you think happened to the sodium? Well, let's put some parentheses around this, kind of like the distributive property in math. Okay? We multiplied 2 by 1 chlorine, but now we also distributed to the sodium atom. So now, as a result of balancing out the chlorine atoms here, we have now changed this amount of sodium to 2. Okay? This unbalanced the reaction again. So now the last step is to keep going in order of which element was changed and balance it back out using coefficients. So we have two sodiums on the product side, one sodium on the reactant side. So what do you think we're going to do? That's right, we're going to add a coefficient in front of the sodium atom on the left side. This will now change it 2 multiplied by 1 
equals 2. So now you can see here that each of the atoms is now balanced in this reaction. So join me next time when we talk about what happens when we have different elements on each side and we have to use common multiples.